Hello everyone, if you're new, my name is Nisha and I share easy, delicious vegan goodness. Like today, we're gonna to be making some healthy vegan lunches from Monday through Friday. To keep your grocery bill affordable and your lunch prep simple, we're gonna be using just 10 main ingredients across these five meals. But of course, you're gonna be using these ingredients in fun and diverse ways. You definitely won't feel like you're eating the same sad quinoa salad at your desk Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which is truly sad, please don't do that. Anyways, for each meal, I'll provide a basic recipe that uses the 10 ingredients as well as a jazzed up version of the recipe in case you have extra ingredients in your pantry or in your fridge that you want to use so you can make them a little bit fancier. The 10 main ingredients are salad greens, such as arugula or kale, avocados, tomatoes, carrots, chickpeas, tofu, edamame, noodles or pasta, and hummus. For Monday's lunch, we're gonna make an avocado pesto pasta situation. So I've got brown rice noodles here. They've been cooked, drained, and then rinsed under cold water. And we'll use some of them for Monday's lunch and then some of them for Tuesday's lunch. So you can cook the whole batch on Sunday or Monday morning and use it in Tuesday's lunch as well. To make the pesto, we're not gonna use basil because that's not one of our 10 main ingredients. We're gonna use the arugula instead. And if you didn't buy arugula, if you bought kale instead, you can use kale, but just be sure to get rid of the stems. This is probably three fourths of a cup. We're also gonna use some avocado. That's the avocado pesto, but you do need to make sure you're using a ripe one. As for the other avocado half, if you're making this meal for two people, you can obviously double the recipe and just use the whole avocado. If you're making it just for one person, the best way to preserve avocado actually is to put it in a Tupperware with some chopped onions. The I don't know if they're called chemicals, but the properties in onions actually help preserve the greenness and freshness of avocado. That's the best method I've tried. We also have some water just to help bring this together. Of course, we've got some salt as well. I usually use kosher salt or sea salt in my recipes. If it says kosher salt, keep in mind that kosher salt is less salty than regular table salt and sea salt. So if you think that seems like a lot of salt, it's because it's kosher salt. Some black pepper, of course. I always use fresh cracked black pepper. I don't think regular black pepper has as much flavor. And then one large garlic clove. This is one of those pantry ingredients that I think most people have. And some lemon juice. I juice it over my fingers when I'm feeling lazy and don't wanna get a strainer, so I catch any of the seeds. Now we'll get to blending. And you'll probably need to scrape it down as you go. If you're oil-free, leave the sauce as is. But personally, I like to add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, just drizzle in while the motor is running. Adds a little bit more richness and flavor. Ooh, it's really sharp from the garlic, the lemon, the arugula. If you're not used to eating arugula or if you're making this for kids, I do recommend maybe using spinach or kale for the pesto, for the pesto, because arugula is a bit peppery and spicy, so it can be a bit much for certain palates. I've got four ounces of noodles here, but you can use as much or as little as you like, depending on your nutritional needs, how active you are, things like that. And then we're just gonna add our chickpeas, but before I do them, I want to show you one way you can jazz up this meal. Instead of just using plain cooked chickpeas, you can make crispy chickpeas. I've showed you how to do this in a different video. I already love chickpeas as is, but this really takes them over the top. And then I've got some cherry tomatoes here. You could use regular tomatoes if that's what you bought. And I like to slice them up just in half. Using a serrated edge will make it much easier to slice tomatoes. And this is optional, but if you wanna add more greens to your diet, you can add some chopped up or torn up arugula to the noodle salad. And one final way to jazz up this meal is to add some hemp seeds on top. Hemp seeds are really high in protein and they add a nice little subtle crunch to your meals, which I really love. For Tuesday's meal, we're gonna do a high protein noodle bowl with a creamy hummus sauce. One of the protein sources is tofu, which we're going to cook, but first we need to press out the excess water by wrapping it in paper towels and weighing it down. Once the tofu has been pressed for 20 to 30 minutes, chop it up into some cubes and toss with a generous amount of kosher salt and some ground cumin. If you don't have cumin, you can use a different spice. And then as gently as possible, toss the tofu with the salt and cumin to coat each piece. First, we'll sear the tofu in a cast iron or other oven-proof skillet with a bit of oil until it has a nice golden crust, and then transfer the skillet to the oven. The combination of both cooking methods will make the tofu tender on the inside, but crispy on the outside. While the tofu is cooking, we'll assemble the other components of this noodle bowl. So for the creamy hummus sauce, let's get started. I'm using about a fourth to a third of a cup, and then we're gonna use some lemon juice. If you have the leftover lemon from Monday's lunch or if you're preparing them on the same day, just use that lemon. But if you have a fresh lemon 
and you have a microplane, I do recommend adding a little bit of lemon zest. Jazz it up, give it a little more freshness and brightness. I promise it's delicious. We'll also add some fresh lemon juice and seasonings to flavor, crushed red pepper flakes, garlic powder, and black pepper. Whisk together to combine and then stream in some water to thin it into a pourable sauce. Then we'll add it to our noodles along with the tofu, edamame, kale, and carrot ribbons. One of my favorite ways to serve carrots is to make carrot ribbons. So all you need is a Y-shaped vegetable peeler. You just take a vegetable peeler and um, you get these nice little carrot ribbons. And then we'll prepare the kale. Slice out the thick rib from the center and then slice the leaves very thinly. We'll be using the kale again in tomorrow's lunch, so I'm putting the rest in this reusable silicone bag. We've got all of our components, so it's time to assemble this dish. We've got the brown rice noodles, and I'm gonna pour in that hummus sauce on top to coat all of the noodles. I like to use some tongs to ensure all of the noodles get some sauce, and then transfer it to your lunch container. To jazz it up, I'm adding some finely chopped fresh dill. The flavor combo of hummus and dill is really delicious, but of course, it's totally optional. Then we'll add our crispy tofu along with some of the carrot ribbons, finely chopped kale, and some edamame for extra protein. Wednesday's lunch is a big chop salad. If salads aren't your thing, trust me, this one's gonna be really hearty and satisfying and not boring. And mostly everything is already prepared. The only thing we need to do is make our dressing. So we've got our chopped kale. I'm also gonna add arugula to my salad. I think one of the best ways to bring interest to your salads is to use two different types of greens. One that's a bit on the softer side like arugula or spinach and one that's on the crunchier side like kale or romaine. For the kale, I recommend chopping it pretty finely, especially if you're not gonna massage it beforehand because unmassaged curly kale that's in big pieces kind of just tastes like roughage so I don't really want you to be eating roughage so either massage it or chop it up finely or do both. For the other ingredients I've got some carrots and I still have some of the carrot ribbons we used in Tuesday's lunch so you could use that or you could grate some carrots using a box grater. Add the grated carrots or carrot ribbons to the salad along with some of the tofu for protein. And for additional protein, add in some edamame or chickpeas or both. And we're also gonna add some avocado for those healthy fats. If you're making your lunch the night before, I don't recommend slicing it up and putting it in the salad. It will get brown by then. But if you're making your lunch at like 7 or 8 a.m. and you're eating at 12 p.m., it should be fine to just go ahead and slice it into the salad. We're going to um, just squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on top. That will help it not brown as quickly. Now all we need to do is make the salad dressing and you could use something really simple like extra virgin olive oil and lemon juice with salt and pepper. But since we have the hummus as one of our 10 ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and make a hummus salad dressing. I've got a fourth of a cup of hummus here and I'm adding lemon juice, black pepper, and salt and one extra pantry ingredient if you have it, Dijon mustard or whole grain or spicy brown mustard. And if you don't have any kind of mustard like this at home, don't worry about going to buy it. But if you do have it, it does add a nice little sharp acidic kick that I think is great in salad dressings. Whisk in some water to thin out the dressing and store it in a separate container. Finally, a few different ways you can jazz up this salad if you have some extra ingredients. I have sauerkraut here. I love having sauerkraut in kale salads, especially with the creamy dressing. I think it pairs together really nicely. You could also add some toasted nuts or seeds. I've got pumpkin seeds here today. And finally, some more hemp seeds because they're just an easy addition to any salad. All right, let's talk about Thursday and Friday's lunches. For Thursday, we're making an avocado chickpea smash sandwich. So I'm gonna start by mashing the avocado up. And the reason I wanna do sandwiches on Thursdays and Fridays is because when I used to pack my own lunches, I'd be really excited about eating a big healthy salad on Monday, but by the time Thursday or Friday rolled around, it was more like I'm ready for a large pizza and a chocolate milkshake and a cookie the size of my head. To prevent and preempt that kind of decision making, we're making sandwiches for the end of the week because you've got the comfort factor from the bread, but you still are eating something pretty wholesome, especially if you're using a good quality whole grain bread. In addition to the mashed avocado, I'm gonna add a little bit of sea salt. And this is the lemon we used the other day to zest. So I'm gonna just zest some more of that lemon. And I love using lemon zest because it instantly perks up and freshens any kind of food you're making, sweet or savory. And then we'll add some lemon juice to this and some crushed red pepper flakes. I think it adds some more flavor than just a regular basic avocado toast and some black pepper. And then we're gonna add our chickpeas and also mash those up. You don't wanna mash the chickpeas entirely. You wanna keep some texture in them so it's not like just eating mush. You don't want like a mush mash sandwich. I've got three extra ingredients here to jazz up the sandwich. We've got nutritional yeast, which will add a little bit of umami, a slight cheesiness to this, 
and I've also got some freshly chopped dill. I think dill goes really nicely with these flavors. And then we've got some sliced scallions or green onions. This is gonna add even more flavor to an already delicious sandwich. Scoop a generous amount of the chickpea avo smash onto your bread and add the salad greens and tomatoes for topping. I like to lightly sprinkle salt and pepper directly on the tomato slices for more flavor. If you have more sandwich toppings in your fridge, like sprouts or cucumbers, feel free to add those as well. Now it's time for Friday's lunch. You already know it's gonna be a sandwich and it's gonna be kind of a tofu salad sandwich. If you only bought one block of tofu for the week, then you probably wanna use most of it, probably three quarters of it to fry it like we did for Tuesday and Wednesday's lunch and then use the remaining part for this sandwich. For this recipe, we're gonna use about a fourth of a block of tofu, so maybe about four ounces. I actually bought two blocks of tofu for the week. I baked, fried the first one and any leftovers I had from lunch, I had for dinner. And then for this, I'm gonna go ahead and make two batches of this tofu salad because it stays good in the fridge for a couple days. Chop the tofu really finely into little cubes and then make the dressing. You need about three tablespoons of hummus and if you have it, some Dijon mustard for a nice tangy bite and salt, pepper, and crushed red pepper flakes to season. Mix the dressing together and add just a bit of water to thin it out. Add the tofu cubes and very gently use a spoon to coat all of the tofu pieces in the dressing. This tofu salad is great as is, but if you wanna jazz it up with some extra ingredients you have, one of my favorite additions is finely chopped pickles, as well as fresh chopped dill and scallions, which you can also use in Thursday's avocado chickpea sandwich. Now it's time for a taste test. It was so good. You would never know it's raw tofu. It's really flavorful. And especially with the dill and the pickles, if you have them, kind of reminds me of egg salad, but obviously better for you and cruelty free. Layer the tofu salad onto one slice of bread and add your sandwich toppings on the other slice. The salad greens, tomatoes, if you have any leftover carrots, and any other sandwich fixings in your fridge. If you like the idea of creating delicious, healthy vegan meals with just a handful of ingredients, don't go anywhere because I've got a short little playlist that shows you just how to do that.